So today I thought I'd go through what's in my camera bag. Uh, I keep going out and doing these vlogs. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go out this week. It's been awful weather. We've had a storm come in here to the UK and the light's just been it. Uh, so I thought I'd go through what I've got in my camera bag and uh, explain why I've got what I've got. And uh, yeah, let's go take a look. So first up, uh, I'm using a low pro uh, flip side 400 AW2. Um, I like this bag because basically it opens on the inside on your back. So every time you put your camera bag down on the floor, all the mud's going around here. I can just open up my gear, keep it away from all the mud on the floor. Uh, on the outside, I've got a Peak Design travel tripod strapped to it on the outside here. And normally I've got a Manfrotto B3 travel tripod in here. I use that one for video. I'm actually videoing on it now. This bag's pretty, pretty comfortable. You've got two decent straps on here. You've got a waist belt as well. If you do load it up, then you can take a little bit of the weight on your waist. Uh, nice big carry strap at the top. A Little bit of extra storage on the outside. I'm gonna take you through now and I'm gonna show you what's inside the bag uh, and what I'm using. Some of it is uh, vlogging gear. Uh, so I'll show you that. I'm filming this on a Canon R5 with a 24 to 70 f 2.8 at the moment and my uh, Rode Video Mic Wireless Go. It's the original one. Um, I've got it set up obviously here and it's on the camera as well. Uh, and the, that's a great little microphone. It's dead easy to set up. It's great to get your audio levels right uh, and straight into camera. So I don't bother anymore with a, an external recorder because I don't like to sync it all in post afterwards. Uh, the only thing with it is, is the little uh, windshield, the dead cats, they do fall off a little bit. I've heard that's been improved on the version two, so I'd possibly like to pick one of those up at some point. Um, but for now, this does the job really well. So it easily fits in. Uh, you can strap the tripod on the side, as I say, that's a Peak Design travel tripod. It's not the carbon fiber one, because that was about 500 quid. I got the cheaper aluminum one. Still nice and light, nice and compact though. And then on the other side, as I say, I put on the Manfrotto B3 travel tripod. I've gone with both of those tripods uh, for a couple of reasons. One, the main one being is they're light and small, so I can strap them both on here when I'm walking around and it's not too much weight to carry. Also, they've got flip lock legs. Uh, I hate twist lock legs because when your hands are freezing cold, uh, you try and undo those twists and uh, it's pretty hard to get a good grip. Also, I'm never sure with twist locks and in fact, I've had it before where I've moved away, thought the twist lock is locked and I've moved away and as I've turned around, it's like, no, and I can see my camera and tripod and everything going over in the wind. So I always use ones with flip locks on. Uh, I just find them a lot easier to use and a lot more secure. Uh, using a ball head on the uh, Manfrotto tripod, it's just nice and easy to set up in whatever position you want. And the Peak Design comes with its own sort of integrated head here anyway. Okay, so let's take a look inside the bag. Okay, so let's get inside the bag. So we've so got these couple of nice little straps on here. This bag's also got a weatherproof cover for if it rains. Um, and the main thing I like about this is I can set it down in the dirt and I've got everything I need in here. So this is not all my kit, but uh, this is a fair bit of it for uh, vlogging and the main camera stuff. So I chose the uh, Nikon Z7 II, uh, um, and I'll go and do a review of that later on, but basically it pretty much gives the best image quality out of all the full frame options. And uh, the main reason that I chose it actually is because I like the Z lenses. Uh, so you've got a choice of these f2.8s, uh, but you've also got the smaller, more compact f4s, which I also um, have used quite a bit as well. Uh, so this is my main camera body, and I've got it with the 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. Um, not because I want f2.8, but it's actually really, really sharp. Uh, and uh, it's quite nice as well. If I do a bit of video on the Z7 II, uh, I can get nice shallow depth of field. So the body itself I've got set up with an L bracket from Small Rig, and uh, the L bracket actually works with the uh, Peak Design travel tripod. Uh, it works, this bit slots in on this side, and I have to attach the Peak Design uh, travel tripod little plate uh, to the bottom, but that means I can easily switch between portrait and landscape orientation without having to flip the tripod over on the Peak Design ball head. 
Uh, this lens is superb for everything, um, but it's really, really sharp all the way through the focal range for landscapes, um, which is what I'm looking for. And it's corner to corner sharpness as well. And especially as soon as you stop down to f5.6 or more, which I'm doing most of the time for the landscapes. So that is my main camera body. Uh, I'm really uh, pleased with it actually. It's got a lovely top display on it. All the dials are where I want them to be. Uh, uh, but I'll go into all that later. And then I have the uh, 14 to 24 f2.8. Again, really, really sharp lens. What surprised me about this is just how light it is. I've also used the 14 to 30 f4, uh, which is really compact and really light. If I was going traveling, I'd probably take that one. It's not quite as sharp out to the corners as the f2.8 version. This f2.8 version, although it's a reasonable amount bigger than the f4, it's, uh, it's not much heavier at all. It's really light. Um, so that's great. The only issue with that is, is that it doesn't accept filters on the front ring element as a standard. You have to buy an extra kit. And I've actually just bought um, a filter adapter holder, which will take a hundred millimeter slot in filters, filters. Uh, from Nissi, a company called Nissi, uh, and I'll have a look at that when it gets here. But basically what Nikon have done is they've put a filter ring on the front lens, sort of not on the lens itself, but on the hood. They give you two hoods. They give you a larger hood, which has a filter adapter ring on it. Uh, and you can then put in these Nissi filters and they'll take 100 millimeter filters. Brilliant lens, um, superb for landscapes. Uh, obviously it goes really wide at 14 millimeters. Um, but you can also get quite a useful focal range to 24. 14 to 24 uh, is perfect for landscapes. <laughs> I was thinking about getting the 70 to 200 f2.8 because that lens by all accounts is super, super sharp. Um, one, at the moment, I've spent quite enough money so I'm not sure about it. I do like doing little intimate landscapes and stuff so I might get it at some point. But for now, I've got the 24 to 200. Now this is a really good super zoom lens. It's not as sharp as the other two that I've just showed you, um, but it is a really uh, a good focal range. So it goes 24 to 200. It does obviously drop down to sort of 6.3 at the long end uh, and starts off at four and changes throughout the, the zoom, the focal range. Uh, it's got a nice locking mechanism on it. Uh, it's plenty sharp enough and to be honest, if you just want a one lens solution, then this is what I was thinking originally that I might use this. But what I'm using it for at the moment is to cover anything from 70 up to 200. Uh, and I may replace it with the 70 to 200 at what, some point, but it's nice and light. Uh, it, it's a nice uh, focal length to have and it easily fits in my bag at the moment. If I get a 70 to 200 as well, I'm probably going to have to uh, get a different bag. So for now, that's also in there. And then for low light shooting, I've got the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8. This is one of the best um, prime lenses I've ever tested. It's incredibly sharp. Uh, obviously it's a 1.8, so it gives great performance in low light. Uh, I know it's more expensive than the standard 1.8, but it's a lot better build quality and it's a lot better image quality than say something like the old um, 50 millimeter 1.8 Gs. Uh, it's in a totally different league. All these lenses that I've got are weather sealed as well, which is pretty important when you're out doing landscapes. But this is if I need a low light lens. I don't always bring it with me on every shoot, um, but it's there if I need it. Uh, everything about this lens is just perfect. I don't want a 1.2 because that starts to increase the size hugely, um, but 1.8 is great for that. And if I want to grab any candid portraits, anything like that. And if I want to do some street photography, this is the lens I'll use. Okay, so then I've got a load of my um, mic stuff. So I've got a Rode VideoMic Pro in there. Uh, that's great if I want to stick it on top of the camera, capture ambient sounds. Um, if I want to do a piece to camera and I don't want to rig up the uh, this mic, the uh, wireless go. Um, so that's pretty handy for that. This one is the uh, VideoMic Pro, so I have to buy batteries for it. It isn't, hasn't got an inbuilt rechargeable battery. Uh, I might try and get some rechargeable, I think they're nine volt batteries for this, but the sound quality on it's really good uh, and it's really simple to set up with your camera. I've also got a uh, Lee filter system and I used to use all the ND grads all the time, but um, with the bracketing in the Z7 II, I really don't carry the ND grads anymore. But what I do carry is a Lee big stopper and all I did is bought the, the biggest uh, filter adapter ring that I can. So I've got an 82 millimeter. Uh, and then uh, I just got stop down rings rather than buying all the different individual adapter rings for the Lee filter system. 
and the leaf filters, we'll get to those in a minute. Uh, the filters that I've got there on the other side of the bag. In this little zip up area here, I've got memory cards. So I've got a memory card storage case and I've also got a one terabyte SanDisk Extreme SSD uh, external hard drive. Uh, this is really handy because I can just hook this up by USB-C to uh, my laptop and back up all the files wherever I am. This case, this bag also has a laptop sleeve which fits up to a 14 inch laptop in. So I have an Asus uh, ROG Zephyrus 14, G14, Asus Zephyrus, Asus Zephyrus, I don't know. It's an Asus G14, so it's a pretty powerful laptop. I can fit that in there, I can do photo editing on it, I can actually edit videos on it pretty well. Uh, and I've got a backup in field there. Finally, the most important thing in the kit Rocket blower, always great for cleaning off the lenses. Uh, and I, I don't know about you, but I always find with microfiber cloth, some of them are not that good. So I've actually got a Lee filters microfiber cloth, which I found to be the best at cleaning off without leaving smears and dirt and stuff like that um, and swirls on the lenses. So it's a Lee microfiber cloth and a rocket blower. These probably are two of the most important things you're gonna need. In fact, just before I started this video, I was blowing the lens dust off. So that is essential. And also in here we've got uh, a little GoPro, just in case I want to film a little bit of video in a different angle near the water, somewhere where I don't want to put the R5. Um, then I've got the GoPro here with, I've got a bunch of spare batteries in here as well. So all my batteries are going in there with the GoPro. I've also got a spare battery for the R5 and I've got a spare battery for the Z7 II. And I also sometimes carry a power bank depending on how long I'm going to be out because they will both charge by USB-C. Which is dead handy, saves me buying. I used to carry loads and loads of batteries, but now I don't need to. Just carry a power bank instead. On the, the flip side, no pun intended, really no pun intended. We've got a little uh, compartment up here, which has one of my daughter's pens in for some reason. And we've got another little hook down here, which we can just loop in a tripod onto if we want to. I don't carry it that way. Never, ever opened that before, to be honest. And then in here, I have got uh, basically the filters. So I don't carry, um, get rid of that pen, eh? I don't carry um, ND grads anymore. And I don't really use the Lee Filters 100 millimeter um, filters that I've got, uh, apart from a couple, which I'll show you in a minute. But I've got a couple of circular polarizing filters. I use the Hoya HD ones. Um, they are hardened glass compared to sort of something like the, um, Pro 1D, I think it is the other ones. But what I like about these more actually is they're really easy to clean, so they don't smear. When you clean them, they don't smear anywhere near as much as the other uh, Hoya filters I've tried. Um, and they don't add a color cast. So they're pretty good and they are still useful in landscape photography. Uh, and also if you're shooting like reflections, water, anything like that, uh, they're really handy. So a couple of circular polarizing filters. I have an 82 and a 77, and then if I have a lens with a smaller lens diameter on it, I'll just use the stop down rings that I showed you before. And we have a variable ND filter. Uh, this one is from Freewell. I only bought this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was about 80 pounds, I think, something like that. It's quite nice, doesn't add a color cast. I use this for video when I'm outdoors, uh, just to get the uh, correct exposure on the video. And it's got a nice magnetic, feels quite strong. When it's on the lens, it comes off easily. It's got a nice magnetic um, front cover on it, so it's dead easy to just pop on and off. Uh, and I, normally that's on the R5, but it's not that bright today when I'm filming indoors, so I'm not using it. So variable ND filter. And then I've got a Lee Filters 10 stop big stopper uh, for doing long exposures. Uh, and that fits in obviously with my Lee Filters adapter ring and uh, filter holder set. And then finally, I have an 82 millimeter adapter ring for the Lee Filters holder because I also have the Nikon Z 14 to 30 F4 and that fits that. So if I think I'm gonna wanna use um, filters on the shots that I'm taking, then I will put the 14 to 30 F4 in instead of the 14 to 24 because I can stick this on and easily get filters on it until I get the Nissi adapter. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's pretty much everything that's in my bag. Uh, that covers everything from wide angle to telephoto. It's also got all my video gear in. And that is everything I need um, to go out and uh, do any of the type of photography that I want, landscapes, things like that. And that's the kit that I'm gonna be using in upcoming videos. Uh, and I'll go through the individual pieces and start to review them out in the field. Uh, when I get a chance. Um, but yeah, it's just a quick video this week because I haven't had the chance to get out, but I wanted to keep uh, posting videos because I said I was going to. And uh, I guess we'll go and see what it can do. Uh, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. I've just noticed that the video camera up there is not recording. So that's great. Brilliant.